Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Spumele Lezondi. Now today we'll tell you about whether African musicians are starting to reap the rewards from music downloads. We visited a virtual reality arcade in Cape Town. Our discussion is about whether it's difficult to trace numbers, sending you anonymous messages. I, Africans, Defo Mohabi is in the studio for that one. This week we also are giving away a Philips LED light, but you need to follow us on social media. That is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and and Instagram in order for you to enter that competition. It's News Network at SABC. Let's see what does email. Let's start with your social media and technology news. President Joseph Kabila's term should be ending, but the government has chosen not to hold elections now in December, as was expected. So, in anticipation of nationwide protests, telecommunications providers have been allegedly asked to block social media. South Africa's Vodacom, Francis Orange and India's Airtel have not commented on this. In the past, they've blocked the internet when they were asked by the DRC government to do so. Vodacom told us here at Network that there is a provision in a DRC law that forces them to do that. This also happens as different stakeholders are holding peace talks. Google is the biggest search engine in the world. They've now released a list of the most searched for topics on Google. It seems mobile game Pokemon Go is popular with the South Africans. But a lot of topics people search for are news driven. Google uses its own algorithms to figure out what's being searched for the most in different parts of the world. A year for global issues. So um, things like Donald Trump, the US elections, um, Rio uh, 2016, Euro 2016. And so we saw a lot of big world events show up. Jacob Zuma, as always. Uh, Tuli uh, was on that list and also her office as uh, public protector was searched for. Um, also some sad news, Mendoza was on was on, on the list of people searched for this year and Google Zulu. So I think South Africa felt those losses quite hard. The search engine has made all its lists for 2016 public. Now that story was about Google and as you probably have realized the Google Doodle is of Steve Beagle who was born on 18 December in 1946. A few days ago the search engine also revealed what some of the most searched topics for 2016 have been on Google in South Africa. That's the story you just saw. Now for those of you who are still looking for activities to do during this holiday season maybe a visit to the virtual reality arcade might just be the thing you would enjoy. The next insert takes us through a VR arcade based at the Cape Town Silicon Valley or Silicon Cape. Holiday season is upon us and most of us are constantly looking for things to do. One of the things that will come to mind is going to an arcade at the mall. But with the advancement of technology, we now have options such as the virtual reality or VR arcade. Some of us grew up playing in traditional video game arcades so what exactly is this VR arcade? It's exactly like a video game arcade except that you have virtual reality. So you come here, you strap a headset onto your face and you enter another world. You can move your head and see different things. Virtual reality has been a big topic in the tech world in the past few years. We've seen VR movies being introduced and Facebook even showcased their latest social VR run prototype at this year's Oculus Connect event. Even with the introduction of the technology to these industries, one never thought that a whole VR arcade could actually become a reality. So there's been a few false starts in VR in the past, where people have pushed it, and then when you had the experience, it just didn't match your expectations. But finally, it's there. And uh, people, when they try it, they realize how cool it is, and everybody wants to do it. Though still new for the South African market, VR arcades are pretty popular in other parts of the world. VR arcades are becoming quite popular in Asia, but that's partly because Asia has very much of an internet cafe culture. So there it's normal to go somewhere to use that type of equipment. From boxing matches to out of space adventures, the VR arcade offers a variety of games for players to enjoy. Even I decided to take a shot at this new way of playing games, so I strapped on my VR gear and into the virtual world I went. However, I must admit that this so-called virtual world seemed a bit too real and it gave me quite a scare at first. Oh my god! It's landing on me! It was so scary! 
the VR Arcade can be found at the Cape Town Waterfront and Joburgers can have the experience at the Voter World in Midrand for about 250 per hour. Now, Chance the Rapper became the first artist without a physical album to be nominated in the Grammys. This means digital releases are now being recognized, but are African musicians reaping any rewards from digital downloads? This is the man who only has his album out on digital format. Chance the Rapper has landed seven Grammy nominations this year. This success is overseas. A few Pretoria students say they're switching to digital platforms that allow them to pay for their music. I only buy the music that I really, really want, like house. Full album downloads, I'll always go straight to the place and get the whole album. Yeah, I'm, I'm big on the, on the streaming game right now. Recently, Apple Music announced that they're now offering student discounts in South Africa. Musicians feel such offers are a good thing of course um, we're getting connected you know onto online digital stores um, and you're finding a lot of online releases actually long before artists release the physical copies of CDs because they actually want to feed it onto online platforms online platforms are encouraged to consider that Africa is a mobile first continent um, and increasingly also from local platforms that have, you know, customized services to talk to cater to, to specific African markets, they're also becoming quite popular. Um, but I think the, you know, the key thing to take out is that, um, you know, um, Africa is going the digital route, especially the mobile route. We, we're dealing with a younger crowd here with smartphones who do not necessarily need to be inconvenienced by going to that mall to buy the CD. And you need to also understand that this also gives you the independence to buy the exact track that you need off an album. Smartphones, tablets and other digital platforms are however opening up the industry to a lot of piracy as many download and share the music without paying for it. Back to the group of students in Pretoria. When it comes to downloading, like if I have to download one song at a time, I'll go to like pirate sites and I'll download. Hip-hop, I download like single tracks, I download online from piracy. It's just really easier to go on the pirate sites and download the music. There are musicians who don't mind sharing for free because of the popularity it creates. Nasty Seer uh, decided to release his album Bad Hair, Bad Hair for free on 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 on, on audio. It's called Audio Smack, and in a day he. He received over 187,000 listens and, and downloads in just one day. And then the following day he released it on iTunes. And this is weeks before he even released the hard copy. And he was already number one. So we, we are moving towards the, the digital platform. And, 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 and it seems like it's now taking over. Although it's, it's, it's at a slow pace, but it's really taking over. Some musicians don't see piracy as an entirely bad scenario. The, the African music um, industry now is, is mostly reliant on, on the popularity of songs and hits. So in my, in my opinion, first of all, the more popular a song is, the more other platforms, paid platforms, are interested in it. So, um, you know, um, if, if a song is, is shared so often, um, you know, um, with the, you know um, I want it illegally or pirated, it becomes so popular that the paid platforms now want to use it and the TV stations that pay royalty also want to get it on them, want to be part of it. And also the artist gets more bookings um, um, and which is, you know, where artists are now making a lot of money. Because in the past, you know, artists weren't getting big fees, but now the fees are getting really, you know, um, really big on par with a lot of the fees, you know, in, even in, 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 the, in the northern music industry. So um, it is a good thing. Um, um, there can be improvement in terms of the paid platforms because there are lots of people that want to pay for music. But just not have the platforms where they can go pay. Um, not many Africans have. Not many Africans have um, have credit cards. This suggests that while Africans are increasingly spending their money to buy music from digital platforms, piracy might decrease even further if payment methods changed to incorporate those that are used in the continent, like M-Pesa, cell phone banking, and others. Over a billion people's Yahoo accounts have been breached. Super Mirror Run gets launched on the iPhone App Store and Panasonic tastes a new cashier technology. These are just some of the stories that made tech headlines in the last week.
Yahoo made headlines during the week when it warned that it had uncovered yet another massive cyber attack, saying data from more than 1 billion user accounts were compromised in August 2013, making it the largest breach in history. Yahoo screwed up big time. And this isn't the first time. This is already the second time this has occurred. Uh, even though chronologically it may be the first time, the concept that somebody was allowed to crawl in and through the Yahoo systems, exposing over one billion people, this is one-seventh of the population of the world. We're talking about deep water horizon magnitude disaster. Yahoo has said that data stolen may have included names, email addresses, telephone numbers, dates of birth, hashed passwords and, in some cases, encrypted or unencrypted security questions and answers. The technology company said it is notifying potentially affected users and has taken steps to secure their accounts. Still in the USA Super Mario Run became available on the iPhone App Store on Thursday as Nintendo banks on nostalgia to drive what it hopes will be its next smartphone phenomenon after Pokemon Go. But unlike top phone games which are free to play but charge for power-ups, Nintendo's charging over 100 Rand if users play beyond the first few levels. Heading over to Japan. Japanese electronic giant Panasonic on Monday began a trial test with convenience store operator Lawson Inc. in the central city of Osaka of their latest high-tech automatic cashier technology. Staff shortages is definitely a problem for us, so this system could be a good solution and system for that. Wow, this is my first visit and that machine was amazing and convenient because I can scan and pay by myself. Now heading back to the USA, Alphabet Inc.'s Google self-driving car project changed itself as Waymo on Tuesday, an independent entity within the technology giant, as executives suggested the company is close to bringing its autonomous driving to the public. First time I sat in one of the prototypes, I loved the fact that there was no steering wheel and no pedals. You know, I've, I've long thought that taking the human out of the loop you know, was the you know, obvious direction that we needed to go. Uh, if the car is competent to drive me, let it do it itself. In July, the project appointed its first general counsel and a month later, it hired former Airbnb executive Sean Stewart as director of the project with the mandate to commercialize the company's self-driving technology. BC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. News Network at sabc.co.za on email. After the break, we chat whether you can trace unknown cell phone numbers. Steve Mohabe from iAfrican is with us. Stay with us. It's more than a gift. It's capturing summer magic. Get a Galaxy S7 Edge with Tab 3 Lite Bundle for $6.99 per month on my MTN Choice Flexi 200. Plus your choice of a Gear VR or an accessory kit. The Galaxy S7 Edge, now in blue coral. Here it is. The moment she turned the party into the party. Just look at them. They will talk about this for at least the rest of the evening. And, well, possibly once or twice tomorrow morning. So, to the master of the trick shot, you are indeed a party comrade. And we salute you with a bottle of Valentine's finest blended Scotch whiskey for just $144.99 from Tops at Spa. <laughs> It is the SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram News Network at sabc.co.za on email. Thank you very much for being a part of our network tonight. Now, this week, SABC journalists who testified in the SABC inquiry in Parliament mentioned that they've been receiving death threats. One of the threats was read out in Parliament. Let's listen. Chairperson, one of the journalists actually shared the text message with me, which was sent to them. 
and I would like to read it to this meeting and to the people of South Africa. It says, traitors, protecting your white friends in parliament who started this, telling lies about your comrades, you were warned, we don't kill blacks, but sit and watch the blood flow. Now, we can't have that. We can't have a situation where Parliament is trying to get to the root cause of problems and trying to play its oversight role, and people who come here are intimidated and, and death threats are issued uh, willy nilly. Right, so that was Ngaba Yomze Kwangwa reading out an SMS in Parliament. Now, Difu Mohabi from iAfrican joins me in studio to tell us whether it's difficult to trace numbers that send anonymous messages. Hello and welcome to Network Difu. Thank you for having me. Now, is there a directory that solves these problems? In terms of directory, if you're speaking of cell phone numbers, not really. What you have is cell phone numbers are registered with mobile providers. In South Africa, technically speaking, there isn't really a anonymous SMS or an anonymous number because all numbers as you would know need to be registered with a mobile provider that is you need to provide your identity document and proof of address under the RICA law. But then again we then hear that there, is, there are numbers sending messages to people and the police haven't traced them in a couple of months. Is it difficult for um, even authorities such as police um, uh, to gain access to people's numbers? There's several scenarios to that. So first of all, you might have uh, numbers where people have registered. So you get sometimes people who register. I know in the Johannesburg CBD, people have heard rumors of people talking about shops that allow SIM cards. You can buy a SIM card that's been recurred by somebody else. So that's the first scenario. So somebody else has registered the SIM card. It's not in your name. And when you, obviously when you use that SIM card, it's sent when the police track that it doesn't reflect your name. So making it so-called anonymous. The other scenario is if you send uh, SMSs from using an, a mail SMTP gateway. You can still trace that. It might send you a number that doesn't look like a mobile number or even a short code does number. Does it take you to a computer IP or where does it take you? Eventually, as I said earlier, uh, uh, there's no anonymous numbers in South Africa because you have to register. So if you call or speak to your mobile provider, they should be able to trace that back because once it lands on your mobile phone, it has to go through a mobile provider. All right, but the thing is, um, everybody has a cell phone number. Um, can I just call my service provider about any number in the, uh, that I want to trace? And, and will they be willing to give that information to me? Unlikely, very unlikely that they will give you that information unless it is a case that uh, involves crime. That's what RICA is for. Yeah, um, and so... Uh, you're saying if it's a, and as long as it's a case that um, that involves crime. Correct. Now we heard in Parliament that um, these people had gone to the police, but the numbers had not been traced. Um, can the police get those numbers quite easily? Well, once you've opened the case, the. the op police are obliged to go ahead with the investigation. In this case, I mean, I don't know the technical details of what's happening with those cases, but you might find that, as I said, that those numbers are registered under somebody else's name, which gives you, it's a dead end. So you end up going to the person who registered it, you ask them, okay, you are the person, but it ends up, no, I'm not a person, it's somebody is else. Is that against the law, Defo? That is against, well, well, again, look, I'm not a legal expert, but technically speaking, it is you can say it's a gray area. I'll explain why. The Constitution speaks of a, a right to privacy, which is the Bill of Rights. It speaks that every individual, every citizen of South Africa has a right to privacy. But it also speaks of uh, the, the, the state having security, the importance of security, or yeah, sovereign security. But again, RICA was introduced. It speaks of allowing uh, certain authorities to be able to intercept communications in cases of crime. It hasn't been tested constitutionally in terms of, 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 of uh, whether we are allowed that right to privacy, but I'd, I'd imagine if it involves a crime, your right to privacy goes away. All right, and in terms of registering anybody's um, number under your name, um, like you're talking about people who can go to a shop in town, is that against the law? I would imagine that's against the law because that's s sort of borderline fraud or misrepresentation of who you are. You are acting as somebody else. You are using somebody else's number as if you are them. So I would imagine that that's, that's illegal. Mm. Um, there are also third-party apps that you hear about. When you call somebody, they already know who you are, even though you've never given them your number. What's the story there? You can. There's third-party apps for SMSs as well. So this works great for numbers that... Uh, you don't have on your phone that are not in your contact uh, address book so you can identify those sms's if they're anonymous and there's also 
apps that you can use where somebody's hidden their identity even on SMS or spoofed it. Spoofing means that changing the identity of the SMS number. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it. I've once received a number, a text from myself. Oh, wow. But it wasn't from myself. Yeah. So, but you can still identify who sent it with some apps. Yeah. But again, in terms of uh, identifying where a text comes from, if a text comes from a country that doesn't have data retention policies, it's going to be very difficult to track it down. All right, another um, question. If I then go and register a SIM card under my name and I give it to a friend, is that allowed? Look, again, that's a bit of a gray area. Uh, you, you can, I'm sure you've used, asked your friend to use your phone or to send a text. It's different from, uh, from using your phone. Your friend needs a record SIM card. You just record yeah. a second or third or fourth SIM card last week and you say, yeah, you can use it. Again, gray area, I would imagine. Rika speak, you've got a right to privacy, as I said. The Constitution gives you that. But again, if they use it in, a crimin in criminal activity, you might come into trouble. All right. Thank you very much, Jeffrey Mohapi from iAfrican. Thank you. All right. Now, we caught up with musician Trace Orazigi. He told us what his favorite piece of technology is. Hi, my name is Trezor Riziki. Uh, I'm a singer, songwriter, and producer. And right now, I think my favorite piece of technology is my iPhone 6S uh, Plus. Uh, 6S Plus. And because I have pretty much all the features that I need. So if I'm traveling, I have my calendar that is linked to a um, program. Um, I have my notes, I write my lyrics, um, and all the things that I want to do during the trip. Um, I have my voice notes and my garage band where I make some demos, my email, so everything is pretty much linked in my social media, so I really enjoy having the phone, so my guitar and that phone, I'm cool. Just to remind you, we are running a competition and this week we are giving away the Philips LED light, which is actually in studio in front of me. Um, all you have to do is to answer a simple question on our social media pages and you stand a chance to win this light. But you need to follow us first. This week's question is, which continent are virtual reality arcades most popular in? That is, which continent are virtual reality arcades most popular in? Remember, it's SABC Network on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, a winner will be announced during the next week's program. Let's take a short break. Water wise. Water is an essential need. The scarcity of it could lead to loss of many lives, including livestock, plants, and much more. It requires us to use it sparingly and responsibly in times of need, failing which our taps and sanitation will not function. For more on water and weather issues, stay tuned to News Today, every Friday at quarter to five Central African time. SABC News, making you water wise. SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram follow us. We took to the streets to find out what gadgets some people would like to get as Christmas gifts. On my Christmas wish list, oh my gosh, an iPhone 7. I've had the same phone for like almost four years now. I suffer a seg, so please, iPhone 7, God, please. Thank you. I would like to have um, iPhone 6. Yeah. But why? Why? I mean, like, I want to upgrade from the phone that I'm using right now. You know, it has to be a uh, Samsung Galaxy S7. Like, right now, it's not the in thing. But, you know, like, we can, like, what happened with it, like, you know, but, like, that's one of the things I would like to have. Now, for this Christmas, I'd like to get uh, an Xbox. An Xbox would be a really good present. Beats by Dre. 
great actually yeah because earphones you know when you have to like channel them to like take out the sound nicely and the bass i'm in that stage now so my earphones are letting me down so if anyone's out there wishing to sponsor hello we're here no one's talking about being gifted ebooks, so we just heard that you can do that too. Now, this week we asked you what you use to the most to make purchases. Overwhelming majority of people that responded to our question said they use credit or debit cards the most um, in order to make purchases. Cash comes in second. It's on your screen at the moment. Comes in, cash comes in second at 31%. And in last place are mobile phone applications. That is 5% of people that responded to our question on Twitter. All right, well, that's all we have for you. Find us on SABC Network on Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to enter our competition on social media. That means you stand a chance to win a cool LED light. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, SABC Network. We leave you with Steve Beagle's Dougal image. From me and the rest of the network team, have a good one.